Hi there, I'm Eggfer, and today I've got a video which is going to be on the technical side, so buckle up. But we're going to be talking about reload and relog detection and why might you care about those things. Um, well, a couple of reasons. One is that you could use it, for example, to detect when a player has entered a particular area and make something happen. So, you know, maybe you want a firework display. For me, on the more technical side, I care about making sure that farms and contraptions uh, carry on working and often they can break when the player reloads an area or relogs into the game whilst they're running. So this is potentially a way that we can fix that. So I'm in beta 1.18.10.26, but this stuff all works in any of the latest releases. And um, I'm in Thim 4, but again, uh, this will work on all simulation distances. It'll just happen forever away, okay? So you can see I've marked out a Sim 4 area here in this world. So I want to start off by showing you a typical example of a, a system that breaks quite easily on reload or relog. It doesn't happen every time. But I've got a couple of Trident killers here, two different designs. This one uses observers. This one has a, uh, a repeater loop. They both can be switched on and off like this. And like this. Okay, so they're both running. And they, they do a perfectly fine job of killing zombies, right? They kill my zombies in both of those, that all works. Um, however, if I log out or I leave the simulation area or I go through another portal and come back, there's a chance that these will break. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I was going out of simulation distance, come back in uh, a bunch of times. This one has just stopped and um, this one does stop quite easily on relog, reload or through another portal. This one, the uh, timings of the repeater just gone completely off. Now all my pistons are extended at once and obviously it's not going to kill any zombies in either of these. And I can switch them back on again and they do recover, which is great. And then they'll kill their zombies. Like so. Um, but there's... Um, not typically a way that people implement to make this reload and relog safe. So we want to look at how we're going to do that. Okay, so let's dive straight in. We're going to start off by looking at relog um, detection. So there's a number of ways of doing that, and I've got a whole bunch of them set up here. So the first one is an observer watching redstone dust, and it's got powered redstone dust. So using either a redstone block or a lever on a block here. The next one I've got is the only one I've got which doesn't use an observer. And this uses a, a burnout torch. So this torch is powering this block, which powers this redstone dust, which um, powers a torch and turns it off again. And it goes in a big loop. So if I come over here, hopefully you'll be able to see it. And I place a torch down again. You'll see that it flashes eight times and then goes off. Okay. And that will stay off uh, unless something gets updated nearby. So if I place a block, it'll come on again. But under normal circumstances, that will just stay turned off. Okay. The next ones I've got uh, a barrel, a trap chest, a chest, or a shulker box. And these all have items in, one or more items. I've got an item frame, which is empty, but could have an item. I've got an empty cauldron, could have contents. And I've got a double chest, which is also empty. Okay, and we're going to place down some uh, blocks along these pistons. And in theory, if these things update when I relog, it'll be detected by the observer, or this, um, this one doesn't use the observer, which is power. It'll power the pistons and it'll push these target blocks forwards. So let's log out and log back in. And there you go, you can see that that's worked for all of those. Over on this side, I've got some which you might think would work, but actually don't. So um, a torch on a redstone block or a powered block doesn't work. Uh, Non-powered redstone dust doesn't work. A, an activator or a powered rail, whether it's powered or unpowered, doesn't work. Containers which are empty don't work. Uh, smokers, furnaces, blast furnaces, even with items in, don't work. Dispensers with items, droppers with items, a, uh, a lectern with or without a book, and a composter with or without compost levels 
and you know any other random contraption you can think of like a door or a trap door or a lever or whatever also doesn't work um this one just went forward because i opened the barrel which is actually something i learned uh, i didn't realize that opening a barrel activates the an observer so there you go but if i log out and log back in here you will see that none of these um blocks get pushed forwards okay so they don't work these are the ones that do work and you can use these for relog detection so i'd like to give a shout out to um ora in particular who is a uh, member of tech rock community and various other members of tech rock as well who alerted me to to some of these things which can uh, cause updates on relog and actually ora has used the barrel system inside a waterproof two-way flying machine to make sure that it's relog proof and when you relog it always goes the right way and he's used a really clever way of doing that i'm not going to tell you what it is but i will link his video down in the description i encourage you to go and have a look um, and check out his channel because he's got some really cool stuff on there okay so that's ora thank you very much um oh and i only forgot to mention the other thing i did try was whether or not a portal uh, updates on relog and it doesn't you can see the target block is still there so uh, portals do not update Okay, so the next thing I want to look at is reload detection. And again, I've got to thank you here. Uh, I want to thank it's Rich Hart, who's one of the you know, leading lights of the Minecraft bedrock technical community. Really, really good guy. And um, he suggested to me using an observer clock on a chunk border to detect a reload. And it's a really clever idea because the point being that if you move away from this chunk, this observer here inside a chunk will become unloaded and therefore the clock will stop. And um, in theory, what that means you can do is if I place a, say a lamp here and have another observer watching that lamp with, I'm going to place these observers so I can see what's happening. If I then move away from here and that chunk gets unloaded and I come back, you can see it gives out a pulse. Unfortunately, it doesn't do it every time. And I think that's something to do with the period of the clock on the observer. So um, whilst it's a, a fantastic idea, it didn't seem to quite work the way I wanted it to. And uh, I came up with an alternative based on the same idea. Okay, So I don't know if you know, if you played around with observer clocks, you probably know they're a little bit weird, their timing sometimes. So if you've got an observer clock like this, and you place down a repeater, on say three ticks then most of the time it'll stay turned on but occasionally it'll go off or it'll start clocking and the same happens with a observer clock with a four tick repeater as well so i'm put one on four ticks and we'll just wait for that to happen there you go that's a four tick one it's just us doing it hopefully the three tick one will do it for me any time now we'll see and just to spite me it's not going to of course you see the four tick one going again but um yeah i mean if it doesn't do it uh, trust me it does it'll go off after a while okay um and that means that uh, these these are kind of pretty unreliable if you want to get a constant signal out of them through a repeater however what i discovered was that if you put this on a chunk border like so and now you place down your uh, repeater this is absolutely solid this will never turn off okay so at least whilst the chunk's loaded hint hint so this will never ever go off and uh, so then I can move away and if I move away in that direction then obviously this clock gets unloaded when this chunk is unloaded if I move in that direction obviously the clock gets unloaded when the chunk's unloaded uh, and when I do the same in that direction it'll get unloaded However, if I go this way, it'll unload when this chunk is unloaded, okay? Because this half, this observer here, would unload first. Uh, and so it won't quite detect me unloading, you know, going out of sim distance of this chunk. But I can fix that. So I've got another one over here. Uh, in fact, let me just move it over a little bit. So I'm going to put it there. And we're going to put another repeater on three ticks. And then I'm just going to run some redstone line along here. 
So if I run redstone along here and I run redstone along here and somewhere in the middle, doesn't really matter. I put a block with a torch on it. What I get is a NOR gate, essentially. And a NOR gate basically means that um, both of the inputs have to be off for this torch to light up. Um, so if I go out this way now, uh, this will unload first because this far observer will unload before the rest of this chunk. But this one will stay loaded. Okay. And it's only when they both unload that my torch will light. Now, of course, my torch won't light because outside simulation distance. But what happens is that when I come back into the area, and we'll demonstrate that. Hopefully, you can still see that over there. Watch this torch uh, lamp in the middle here. It does light. And that's because these repeaters are turning off and that allows the torch to come on when you reload this chunk. Okay, so it's just a, a weirdness of observer clocks uh, and chunk loading. So one more important thing to remember is that reload includes go through a portal. So I've got my system set up with a little pulse extender and lamp here. So we can see what happens when we go through this portal. I'm going to go through there. Come out in a nether, in my nether fortress at spawn, which is kind of cool. And then I'm going to go back. And you can see there that the lamp is lit. So um, this circuit can also be used for detecting someone entering the area from a portal, as well as just coming back into thin distance via, you know, the furthest chunk. Uh, there's, there's a few more weird things I want to show you because they're pretty cool. Okay, so well, I've got this lamp here. Um, so let's do a runner redstone circuit along from here, and I'm going to have one, two, three repeaters. I'm going to put more than four chunk on four ticks, and I'm going to put a, another lamp here. So we know what's going to happen, right? I'm going to go out of the area. When I come back, the torch will light, this lamp will light, and then 12 ticks later, this lamp will light. Let's go and have a look. So here I am going outside my chunk. Hopefully you can see those lamps. In fact, let me just quickly change my FOV to make it easier. Okay, now you can see those lamps. Uh, I hate working in this FOV, but uh, now I'm going to come back into the chunk and we'll be simulating this temple chunk again. And let's see what happens. You see, all those repeaters came on at the same time. Both lamps lit at the same time. So if you're ever wondering why your circuits break on reload, <laughs> I, think, I think that's a really good example of why that happens. And in particular, if you think about our Trident Killer, let me go back into normal FOV. If you think about our Trident Killer, um, that has essentially a set of repeaters going around in a circle. And if all these light at once, then um, this whole circuit will just stay lit all the time. And that's what happened to us in our case, right? Now, uh, one thing that's interesting is that this is not 100% reliable. So if you're um, hoping that you can get kind of instantaneous redstone like this, you can't quite. Sometimes it will work. So let me come back in, and sometimes it won't. I'm going to try and find you an example of when it doesn't. So there, I think you saw that the second lamp came on a little bit after this first one. So you don't, but it still came on actually really, really quickly, but you don't necessarily get uh, instant transmission through the whole line, okay? So that was my point. And now, um, okay, so this is great. This is a, now a way of detecting reloading this central chunk. And it works in all directions, right? Because if I go this way, it'll still um, unload both those clocks at the same time, load them both back in, and my torch will come on. So this is great. And... Um, we can now use that to protect our circuits. Okay, so off camera, I've set up a little circuit here. So this is the same thing we had before, our reload detector with the torch, which will come on. That is now powering a pulse extender. 
and I've just basically wired up Pulse Extender up to my um, two Trident Killers. So one there and one here. Okay, so now when I go off over here and I unload the system, and I come back, you see my Pulse Extender comes on. Interestingly, none of the comparators light. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the, tor the lamp comes on and all of these get powered and this all restarts itself. So this now is completely relog proof. And if I wanted to add re sorry, reload proof, so I want to add relog proof, I could do something as simple as this. Um, so let's put down a that left down a block. We can power that with a lever. Redstone dust on top, an observer watching that, and a block here with a need a four tick repeater to make this um, force extender work properly. Okay, so now this should be entirely reload and relog proof. So let's just give it a quick go, see what happens when we reload, relog. Okay, my words all mixed up now. So there we go, we've re-logged in. This starts up our um, pulse extender. It restarts both of these. Okay. So yeah, so that's a good way of making it um, reload and re-log proof. So it's a bit of a circuit, of course. Um, and maybe it's too much for something as simple as uh, a Trident Killer. But if you've got one which is running a farm and you want to keep it running all the time, then this is a good way of doing it. Um, you could have more complicated systems and sometimes they will not even work with a system like this because there's too much kind of going on. I'm thinking something like a moss farm. Um, I've designed a moss farm recently which is great but it is not reload proof and I'm not convinced that this circuit would make it fully reload proof uh, because I think the time it would take to, to um, activate everything within the farm or turn off everything in the farm is going to be too long. So the last thing we're going to look at is a way of dealing with that. Okay, so we're going to look at proximity detection and it's a similar concept to the reload detection and I've built half it over there. I'm going to build the other half here with you. So I'm going to come in one, two, three and on the fourth block I'm going to place my observer clock across the trunk border. I want a repeater on three ticks. I'm going to do the same over here. So I'm on the fourth block, observer clock, retick repeater. And then we're going to put a block in front of each of those, a block down there in the middle, and I want a torch um, on here and here. Redstone dust on there. And I've done exactly the same over on this corner already. And then I've started to run a redstone line and we'll build one over here, which we're going to join up to this over here. Uh, yeah, like that. Okay, run redstone over the top of that. Not down there. And somewhere in the middle here, we've got a block which, um, if I put a target block on there, can redirect the signal. Put a lamp on top of that. Now, what's going to happen is that as I approach a uh, a border chunk, so one of these on the edge of a chunk, you see that lamp is currently unlit. As I go across into this border chunk, the lamp will light up and it stays lit. Uh, if I come back into the area, then the lamp will go out. So now I've got a method where I can detect a player leaving the area and be able to react to that. So um, I can use this signal here to say turn off a machine and hopefully shut it down gracefully before it breaks. Okay, so I go right out of the board, that stays on, of course. Come back, it stays on. Only when I go into one of these chunks, which is not right on the edge, does it go off. Now, this also isn't a perfect system. Okay, and the reason it's not perfect is that um, this chunk here is perfectly fine to be in. And I can get across this corner here before the circuit has time to light up. 
So it is possible to escape from this. Um, but if you're looking for something to improve the uh, reloadability of a farm, then this is a pretty good way of doing it. That's if the, the normal methods of you know reload and relog detection I showed you don't work, then you can try and shut off the system before you actually leave the area. Okay, that's it for today. Hopefully I wasn't too heavy going and hopefully some of you will find this useful for um, protecting your farms and contraptions from reload and relog. And uh, thanks again to all of the people who have helped contribute to my knowledge in this area as well. And uh, have a look at the description for the links to, to some of those people's channels, okay? So have a great time and I'll see you uh, at the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.